All right, in continuing exercise one, our line art jumble, the first thing we had to do was to find references, right? So on our exercises, just on our first two exercises, you'll find them under unit two, what we're doing. This is all about compositing using other people's pixels. When we get to the project, this will kind of walk you through it and give you some past examples. We're trying to find line art that is black already, like just kind of inked lines, or we can make it black that we can layer on top of itself to make our own composition. And we have the YouTube videos for it, which are always part of the assignment on our YouTube page, which you can also find under links. And this was our progress so far. So we got four videos in. The first video, we just got introduced to the assignment. The second video, that they're all 15 minutes, was about how to find good sources of line art, right? And that's important because you want them to be high quality sources. And those are in the directions as well. So we tried a few different things. We tried, we picked a theme, first of all. You can do a band book theme. You can do your favorite cartoon. I'm doing a Hawaiian shirt theme because I was wearing one on Wednesday. And then Auto Draw was one place where we played with getting line art that you can use. Auto Draw is kind of this fun Google project that not a lot of people know about. If I wanted like a cowboy hat, I could kind of draw a hat. And then it would give me suggestions for what I actually meant. <laughs> right. So what we want are not to use the lines that we draw. We're not going to make our own pixels for this project. Instead, we're going to use other people's pixels. So these are high quality vector pixels, you know, made in AutoDraw. I can delete. Or add to it, select it and delete. I can move it. And the way I just show you is the first kind of shortcut. We go over a lot, right? In each class it gets overwhelming, but then we repeat it. We learn these skills over and over again. So in order to save something from AutoDraw. It's nice to have these large screens, these high def screens. And then I'm simply going to screen grab it. So you make it as large as you can on the screen. And then you hold down Command, Shift, and 4 to do a targeted screen grab for a Mac. This is the longest shortcut I need you to know. If you have your sound on, it will make that little photo sound, and it will save it to your desktop as a rasterized image, which means it's pixel-based. It's just got a process. There it is. So that is one way to get clean line art. What's nice about Google AutoDraw is though there's a lot of illustrations there, they're all Creative Commons open. So we are able to use them freely. So that's one option. And you can kind of brainstorm about what kind of imagery you might use. That's very helpful for the band books, right? So if I was doing a band book, that might be a Western by John Steinbeck, maybe. Um, I might use that. Can you pick a band book first? You want to pick some sort of theme first. Oh, okay. Yeah. So band book is the one I demonstrate. It's one I've used in the past. And I'll always suggest themes, but I won't require them. Because sometimes it really helps for a student to just go with the theme. Other times they have their, a better idea that they want to pursue. As long as we're learning the skills, we're good. The other way is using an image search. So the image search I have linked in the assignment, and it's under links in our Canvas page, is Pixabay. And this is because all of these images are royalty free. So it means they are Creative Commons open. You just like the ones from AutoDraw. You can use use them for whatever purpose you want. Right? And the the nicest thing about them, and Josh, it will stay unlocked, so you're fine. The uh, the nicest thing about them is you can use these images, and you can know whatever image you can find on Pixabay is going to be high enough resolution for print quality, which is not at all true of Google Images. Right? Just pick the highest one to download. Yes, you're going to pick the highest pixel based image. So if I want a, a cowboy hat. For my theme, I would search cowboy hat, right? 
Now, the problem is, just like when you do a Google search, you're going to get lots and lots of results that aren't useful to you. We're looking for line art. So what we want to do then is to limit our search options. We want not all images. We're just going to do illustrations. And we want not all colors, but we want black and white. And then apply those filters. And then we'll get line art that we can use. Some of it's going to be kind of similar to what auto draw options are. Mm -hmm. So it's the way that you can limit your search options. So you'll see these tools under here. If we go to illustration and we go to the color and we say just black and white, then that will mostly give us stuff that applies, right? I might not want to do full silhouettes. We're looking for kind of coloring book types of images, but this kind of thing. Now, in order to download it, you click on download here, and then you can choose, and you want the highest pixel resolution they give. A lot of the line art illustrations will also be vectors, but we don't want the vectors yet because we haven't learned about vectors yet. So to download, you just hit download. Now, in order to download the highest quality, you will have to log in. But it's free. It's just like logging into to Gmail or something else. You can even log in with your Gmail. And we're going to be using Pixabay quite a bit for these compositing projects. And then the last way I showed was Google Images, which you're probably somewhat familiar with. But Google Images has actually gotten harder and harder to use because the internet's just so full of junk, right? And all of it shows up on Google Images. So sometimes the images are terrible quality. If I look up cowboy hat. Yeah, a lot of them will be for sale and watermarked. I'm in Google Images. I search cowboy hat, just like in Pixabay. Very helpful to limit it, but I don't want to limit it to shopping or maps or videos. Instead, I have to click on Tools, and that will give me the, the limiting within Google Images. And then I'm going to limit the size because, remember, Pixabay is always big enough. Google Images are seldom big enough for print quality. So I want only large images. Those are going to be at least 1,000 by 1,000 pixels, or I think at least one dimension is 1,000 pixels then. I'm going to limit it by color. I'm going to say black and white, and I'm going to limit it by type and I'm going to say line drawing. So you would think that that would, that would help, and it, sure enough, it does. Now, there are lots here. They should be big enough, but when I click on them, I have to do a few things to check. And one thing I'll do is right-click, and I'll say Open Image in New Tab until I can zoom in on it and see. And you can see that that fills up. When I zoom in, that fills up the screen. That is a lot like auto draw, making it as big as you can. We need it to at least fill up our screen. And then we can save it just by dragging it onto the desktop or by right clicking and saving image as. But this one's good. This has a watermark at the bottom, but we can cut that out. And when we zoom in, you can see the pixels. But at full screen, it looks decent enough. Also, what's nice about Google Images is it will tell you the pixel dimensions in the corner here. So this is the minimum size. It is 1,000 by 880 pixels. It's better if both dimensions are at least 1,000, like this one. This is 1,200 by 1,200. So what do I do? I right-click. I say Open Image in New Tab, just so I can really check it out. Now, the difference between this image and the last one, you see how this is filled in with white in the background, right? And this one is filled in with gray squares. That's because if you go to that site, it's a PNG asset that you can pay for and download, which is transparent. But here it means the squares are actually in the image. That's not a deal breaker. It's just some of the issues with Google Images that you can avoid with Pixabay. All right, so I'm going to just for expediency's sake, I'm going to combine my Hawaiian shirt with cowboy stuff. So I've, got, I've got two other things. Why not? So Hawaiian cowboy is now my theme. There, there's a cowboy in Hawaii. Exactly. My, my 16-year-old was going on in the car this morning about how the best build in D&D &D is when you combine a monk with a gunslinger. You get a gunk. So these kind of mashups happen in culture.
So how do I bring these line art examples, whether they're from AutoDraw, which is here, whether they're from Google Images, whether they're from Pixabay. Pixabay images are going to go to your downloads. And then you can just drag them onto your desktop. Think of your desktop as your drawing table, and you're just moving all of your collage materials there, and then moving them onto your artboard. So the first thing you need to do is to set up your, your piece of paper, your artboard. So in Photoshop, you say File, New, and you want it to be in inches what what size do we want minimum for these exercises eight by ten inches so eight inches wide ten inches tall make sure it says inches not pixels by how many pixels per inch yeah we want always at least 300 because 300 is the minimum print resolution i'll drill that into you so we do 350 in the lab so it's a little bit higher we don't do 650 we don't do 1250 because that kind of just wastes memory right these machines can handle it, but it doesn't make sense. All right, now I can just drag and drop these on. And when I do that, it's going to give me what's called a transform box. I can use that box before I hit return to place the image. So if I want to shrink it, I can drag from the corner. If I want to stretch it, I can hold down shift, and that will distort it. If I don't hold down shift, it will lock its proportions. And if I want to rotate it, I click outside of the box and rotate. Once I hit return, it is placed. And you'll see it looks very pixely and distorted until I hit return. That renders it. If I want to get back to transforming it, which is where a lot of us are now, I want to hit Command T, or you can go to Edit at the top and Transform. That's the main thing we're learning in Photoshop is how to manipulate layers by transforming them with Command T. And Photoshop will show you all of the, the commands up here. Some of them are going to be very useful, but it will also teach you valuable shortcuts sometimes. Right? So Command T, very valuable shortcut. And that will give me that transform box again. And then if I right click in the transform box, I get even more options, my favorite of which is warp to play with. And that allows you to kind of, I, I think of it like rolling out cookie dough. I can use a rolling pin and kind of push this image from dif different areas in different ways. So it's still Command T, but then you right click within that transform box. And then you can choose warp. And then there are these are new, the split warp options. You can actually make your own divisions and make more and more <laughs> ways of warping it. So once you hit return, it will affect all of those transformations. And if you want to check it, you can just do Command Z or you can go back in your history, which is right here, to see what it was like before. You know, it's a pretty big change. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that by layering up on the ones I already started. And let's bring in this guy. And I can place him by rotating. I can also right click and I can flip it. I'm gonna flip the negative. And then the problem is because he has white pixels, he has this thing, I don't want any of that. So to get rid of the white pixels, at least for now, I'm going to change it from normal mode. You can see the layer here. And we're going to change it to multiply mode. Now multiply mode does not get rid of the white pixels. They're still there. But what multiply mode does is it's like putting it on an overhead projector and only the dark pixels will come through. So once you overlay it with other pixels, that are underneath it, they're all going to come through. So I want to change all of these to multiply mode. But the ones that you got from Pixabay are going to be PNG line art elements. PNG line art elements are already transparent. They only have black pixels. So you don't need to switch those to multiply, but it doesn't hurt to do it. <clears throat> 